হেলো স্টুডেন্টস ওয়েলকাম ব্যাক টু মাই চ্যানেল লিটারেরি মিট ইয়ার আগর ভিডিওটি মানে ইংলিশ মেজর ফিফথ সেমিস্টার এখন টেক্সট হার্ট অফ ডার্কনেসর সামারি আসামিস এক্সপ্লেন করেছিল সেয়ে আজি মানে এই টেক্সটন রিটার্ন সামারি দিব উলাইছো ইংলিশত যাতে স্টুডেন্টসবরে এক্সামত এই টেক্সট রিলেটেড যে কোনো কুয়েশ্চন এটেম্প্ট করবেন জসেফ কনরেড ওয়াজ বর্ন ইন এইটিন ফিফটি সেভেন এন্ড ডাইড ইন নাইনটিন টুয়েন্টি He was a Polish British novelist and short story writer. He is regarded as one of the greatest writers in the English language though he couldn't speak English fluently until his 20s. Heart of Darkness is a novella by Joseph Conrad that was published in 1899 in Blackwood's magazine into 3 parts. The novella is a critic of the European colonial rule in Africa. It is an autobiographical work and a story within a story. It deals with the real life incidents of Joseph Conrad. He was at a place named Congo when he went to Central Africa in 1890. He describes his journey to Congo in this novella. Firstly, he wrote it as a diary and later it was published as a novella. The major themes of the novella are colonialism, imperialism and brutality of European powers. Charles Marlowe tells his story to his passengers when their ship was waiting about how he became the captain of a steamboat for an ivory trading company. As a child, Marlowe was fascinated by the blank spaces on maps, particularly Africa. The image of a river particularly fascinated Marlowe. Then he narrates the story of how he met Kurtz. One of the passengers then narrated the story of Marlowe from Marlowe's perspective. However, Marlowe is the primary narrator. The novella begins with Marlowe who is sitting on his steamboat floating on the Thames River. He is narrating the story how he went to Belgian Congo when he was young as a riverboat captain. He always wished to experience a sea journey in an African country. Finally, he got the chance when one of his well-connected aunt helped him getting appointed as a steamboat captain for an ivory trading company. The steamboat was heading towards Congo River. Congo used to be the colony of Belgium. The country was situated at the central part of Africa. On the way, he spotted a French warship firing towards the forest as they were engaged in a fight with the native black people. Marlowe found it to be to be a silly thing and realized how the native black people are tortured here. He then reached the first company station which was called the outer station. There he saw the black people were forcefully bound to work. The company calls them criminals even though they were slaves. He met the chief accountant of the company. The chief told Marlowe about Kurtz who runs the inner station which was in the inner and deeper part of the forest. Marlowe wanted to go there but unfortunately his steam boat was damaged and it would take at least 3 months to get repaired. Until then he had to stay there although he asked them to repair it sooner during the time he heard a great praising of Kurtz one day when he entered his boat to check how the repairing work is going on he spotted two men talking about how Kurtz have become a threat to their work as he alone could gather the amount of ivory that needs almost 10 people to collect they were ultimately planning to kill Kurtz The two men were the general manager and the brickmaker. By then, Marlowe became more desperate to meet Kurtz. His boat is finally repaired, and he immediately sets out for the inner station with the general manager and other company agents. It took them a two-month long and difficult journey to reach there. On their way, the native people were trying to stop them from going there by beating drums and releasing fogs. They almost reached while some natives attacked them. Marlowe's fellow worker the helmsman died after a spear was being thrown to him. Marlowe then somehow managed to drive them away by blowing up the horn. They finally reached the inner station. There he met a Russian trader. The trader informed them that Kurtz is alive but is too ill. The general manager went to bring out Kurtz. Marlowe and the trader then had some conversation. He told that the natives considered Kurtz to be a godlike figure and so respects him a lot. The manager and his men took out Kurtz on a stretcher. Suddenly the natives and a woman who was most probably Kurtz's wife became rebellion but then calmed down after Kurtz hinted at them. 
The trader told Marlow not to reveal what he shared and also advised Marlow to run away, otherwise he also would be trapped by the manager. The trader then ran away. The next day afternoon, when they were about to take away Kurtz, the natives gathered at the river bank and shouts that Kurtz is going away from them. Kurtz was getting weaker day by day. It seemed like he won't live longer. On their way back, Marlow visits Kurtz's room one night on the steamboat. Kurtz told Marlow that he is just waiting for his death to come. Marlow was looking at his pale face and felt as if he wants to tell something. His last words were the horror, the horror. After some time, when they all were having dinner, a boy came and informed that Kurtz is no more. All rushed to see him. Before that, Kurtz gave some paper documents to Marlow, which he kept secretly. He started falling ill after the death of Kurtz and soon returned to Europe without telling anyone. While in Europe, some relatives of Kurtz visited him, whom he handed over the paper documents. The last visitor was Kurtz's long-suffering fiancée. She asked Marlow what were the last words of Kurtz before his death, to which he lied saying it was your name. Although he didn't want to tell a lie, but since she was in grief, he knew what she is hoping to hear, so he lied to her. The story concluded when she began crying after hearing it. Story to Baldore Bujibole to Maloke Yar Agor video to Sabo Para Jot Moy Asamisot story explain Korisu with animation. If you like the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.